Hi everybody, welcome back to Call of Duty Modern Warfare's Warzone and well this isn't just going to be a normal circle strategy and tactics victory walkthrough because this is another another solo victory that I achieved um, today. It's also going to be a tribute to this amazing game but why I think it really is a work of genius what Activision Infinity Ward have created with uh, Battle Royale in Warzone is something that we didn't think was possible. If you, th you know, if you remember back, we had we had Blackout, didn't we, from um, Black Ops Four, and we started playing that, and it was it was it was it was okay, but the map was too small for a hundred players. The inventory system was too complicated. There was all these extra silly bits that were in it that, that made it um, difficult to play. And then we had what for me was going to be, I thought, the greatest battle royale. Eclipsing PUBG, which was going to be Firestorm as part of Battlefield 5, and they got they got close with that game. They got close. It looked great. The gunplay was great, and then they ruined it by having a crazy inventory system where it was difficult to pick things up off the ground and then swap between the stuff you had, and this crazy time to kill system. Which, um, which again ruined the game, and it didn't help that Battlefield 5 has been a disappointment as well. Um, and you've really been left with the likes of Apex, who have really delivered. Um, people really like Apex, and of course, people really like really like Fortnite. But of the the kind of realistic shooters, well, you know, semi-realistic shooters, PUBG has stayed there at the top of the tree as being the battle royale of choice. Um, but you may have seen one of my previous videos where I talk about the fact that unfortunately PUBG isn't at its best anymore um, because of decisions made by the developers um, and with the maps and things like that. And then we've now got this game, Warzone. So, you know, why is it why is it so good? Well, just like PUBG, which I still think PUBG is one of well, I'd still say it's the th the greatest game ever made. All right, I still think I still, still think that about um, PUBG. For me, the the two greatest games ever made are a shooters. That is, you've got PUBG and you've got Battlefield One. They're they're the two greatest games ever made. Um, but Warzone could could very well get get up there because just like in PUBG, in Warzone. An old guy like myself, someone who's pushing 50, can go up against 150 whippersnappers and I can win. I can win solos, I can win squads. Not every time. Every time, you know. I'm not saying, you know, I can do that. But if the circle is good to me and I have the right opponents and I have a big smattering of luck, I can win. And that's very, very special, I think, because it kind of endears me to the game and makes me want to makes me want to play it oh, so much. And it means that if I can do it, someone with incredibly slow reactions, who wasn't brought up on first-person shooters, my video game history kind of ended with the, sort of the before they really came into their own. You know, a little bit with the PlayStation 2, and that was it. You know, all the, the, the Call of Duties and stuff, I, I, I missed all that. Medal of Honor Allied Assault was probably the closest I got to. Obviously, there was no online multiplayer for that. And I came back very, very late, you know, when my son gave me his 360 very, very kindly. And then, <laughs> then I got stuck into Call of Duty. Um, so, you know, when you watch my gunplay and what I do, I often get lots of comments going, how on earth did you do that? Your aim is terrible. It is, but in Warzone, just like in PUBG, if you use the right strategies and tactics and play to your strengths, you can win. Which I don't think I, pr I probably couldn't in Apex or Fortnite, because Fortnite obviously with the building and Apex, there's so many things that you've got to be able to manage. And I like this style of shooter. I like boots on the ground, semi-realistic shooters. Um, and I just love the aesthetic. I think... What they must have done, and I'd love to see a documentary about the development of not only War Zones, Battle Royale, um, I mean, Plunder's great as well, but the whole of Modern Warfare 2019. If I, if they did a documentary about this game, because Call of Duty, you know, it had been 
on its on its knees you know we had ever ever since you kind of had um ghosts that was um, poorly received and then you had the likes of black ops 3 which was better but it wasn't boots on the ground and then you had the terrible infinite warfare in my my opinion and they started to bring things back a little bit didn't they with um uh world war 2 but yeah, the multiplayer in that wasn't brilliant and the sales have been going down and down and down and yet this Modern Warfare has been the most popular Call of Duty of this generation and the, mo the best Call of Duty in many, many, many years and how they did this, how they made these hard decisions, I think they must have just stood there and gone right, when they were working on the Battle Royale ok guys and girls what things do you annoy you when you're playing a battle royale? Make it less fun, and let's make sure those things aren't in our game. And obviously, right at the top, you've got free to play. Let's make it. Let's make this free to play. And they must go, whoa, 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 whoa. Actors, I said, what do you mean free to play? The way we make money from Call of Duty by releasing a game every November, and that we get our sixty bucks off everybody, and that's how we make money. And then. You know, and we put um, we put uh, loot crates in it and stuff like that. And we charge money for that. And they're like, no, 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 no. We're gonna make it. We're gonna make it free to play because one of the most important things about a battle royale is player numbers, and you need to have massive player numbers in in order to have lots of local um, dedicated servers around the world so people have a good non-laggy playing experience. So that right, let's go free to play. Okay, all right then, we'll go to free to play. Okay, and, uh, and let's make it cross-play. Let's make it cross-play between Xbox and PlayStation and PC so that we can have all these players coming together. And let's have cross-parties so they can actually talk to each other. And it's like... It's like <laughs> what, what, you can imagine they must have had to push it with Microsoft and Sony. And they were like, yeah, yeah, that's what we're going to do. And then Activision must have said, well, wait, what about the monetization of this? When are we going to get our loot boxes in there? Because, you know, we make lots of money from loot boxes, don't we? And they said, no, 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 loot boxes suck. Everybody hates loot boxes. What we're going to do, we're going to have a battle pass. We're just going to copy PUBG and Fortnite Apex. Have a battle pass, and it's just going to contain cosmetic items and the new guns that are in it are going to be free to everybody anyway so even if you don't pay for the back pass you can work through the stuff and there'll be free things that you can get and we're going to monetize it with that and we're going to monetize it with cosmetic um, skins for characters and guns that you can buy in the shop how about that <laughs> sounds good to me so no loot boxes so you know it's monetized in a really good way and I think what they're going to do with um, Warzone is I think they're going to be working on another map and for every Call of Duty release there'll be another map maybe with different operators and things um, if that would kind of that, that would kind of make sense so next year's one or this year's one which probably won't release until after Christmas anyway you're gonna have they reckon it's Black Ops remake don't they so it's probably gonna be set in the Cold War and then we'll have a Cold War themed battle royale map. I think I think that's how they're going to do it. Um, if not, if they just kept on running with this map, then fine by me. It's big enough, and we can have lots and lots and lots of fun with it. Right from the start, you know, when when, when you're playing a, uh, a battle royale, it's always a bit boring at the beginning when you've got to get in the lobby. You know, in um, in PUBG, you just kind of run around punching each other. Um, in uh, Firestorm, you could pick up weapons inside this hangar and shoot each other. In Warzone, they're like, well, no, no, no. In the lobby, you're going to fly down onto the ground and you're going to shoot each other. And by the way, you're going to earn XP when you shoot people. <laughs> so you've got like this mini game at the beginning of the main game, which is really cool. Aim assist. Obviously, we've got aim assist. This is Call of Duty for consoles. You've got aim assist. But you don't have aim assist for mouse, as you'd expect, and it seems to be balanced very, very well. So I, it's, I can't really say whether it's easier to aim with mouse and keyboard than it is with controller. But the, what I have heard is that people on PC um, find it quite challenging sometimes when they come up against people with controllers because of aim assist, and that's fantastic by me, because I know that when you're playing. Um, PUBG, the last thing you want to come up against is anybody with mouse and keyboard because there is no aim assist at all. 
graphics. You know, this game, this is game is running on an OG PlayStation 4. It's not a PlayStation Pro. It's not, not an Xbox One X, and it looks absolutely beautiful. It makes you wonder when you think about like the release games that came out for for PlayStation and Xbox when these consoles first started. I guess it was Ghosts would have been Ghosts came out on Xbox and um, Xbox 360, Xbox One, PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4, when they come out, and um, actually loads of them, didn't they? Infinite um, Advanced Warfare did as well. And, you know, those games ran great, especially, you know, Advanced Warfare really, really enjoyed that game. But then you look at the size of this map and the detail that's on this map, and you think, how on earth did they get this? to work. This is another thing you really want to see in a documentary about how they develop this. If you compare the way this game looks to PUBG, you know, don't get me wrong, you know, PUBG has got its own style, it's more of a military sim, isn't it, kind, kind of, than Call of Duty obviously is, you know, it's not a military sim. But look how beautiful this game looks. It looks like a level in Call of Duty, and yet it's absolutely massive. It's the size of, like, Erangel from PUBG. Absolutely amazing. The sound, it sounds really cool. The gunfire, I think they've got to do a little bit of work with the, the um, is it the occlusion they call about gunfire? So how close the, the gunfire sounds compared to how close it is in reality. I think things sound a lot closer than they actually are. Um, so they need to do some work on that. But, you know, especially when you get things like the, the A-10, uh, the tank busters coming in doing their strafing runs. You get, it sounds... Oh, absolutely brilliant. The helicopter sound good, the trucks sound good. Fantastic. I forgot one thing, didn't I? You can shoot people on the way down. When you're coming down from the from the aeroplane with your parachute, cut your shoot, and as long as you're not going too fast, bang bang bang, you can get a few shots into enemies and actually kill them. Going back to the map though, the map is huge and there's all these different little diverse places that you can fight in. Most of them are in the multiplayer as well, so you can get experience fighting them, whether that be in Ground War or the Ordinary Multiplayer or in the um, Spec Ops Co-op mode. So you've got forests, you've got lakes, you've got towns, you've got cities with huge buildings, multi-story skyscrapers that the circle might finish on that way. Absolutely, uh, absolutely amazing. But it's not too big. This, I think they, they really copied Erangel, I think, for this. Because we know that the blackout map was too small. Yeah, it, it was kind of okay when it had 64 players on it, but when they went to 100 players, no, 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 not good. And this map supports 150 players, no worries. There's enough space to be able to get away from the other people and loot them in peace. I'm not sure, it might not be quite as good when it goes up to 200 players. I, I want them to stay at 150. I think 150 is more than enough. Um, but as I say, the fact that you can fight in all these different places is, is is really really cool. The movement, it's Call of Duty movement. You know, this is this is what we've been looking for. We I always said, you know, what we wanted from Battlefield, because Battlefield, you know, especially Battlefield One and Battlefield Four, you know, such amazing games. But we always said what we wanted was we wanted a Battlefield with Call of Duty movement. Because Battlefield can be a little bit clunky sometimes. It's better in Battlefield 5 the movement, but the game itself isn't you know, isn't that great. And it's really strange that this year, well, 2019 release of COD, COD Modern Warfare, we've got Call of Duty morphing into Battlefield. We've still got TDM, we've still got um, Domination, we've still got the small game modes. And we've even got small Call of Duty um, focused and distilled into like the 2v2 gunfight mode which is absolutely amazing but where Battlefield 5 has made the mistakes of producing these crappy infantry based maps that abandon the idea of um, combined arms and tanks and jets and all this sort of stuff Battlefield has embraced, uh, sorry, uh, Call of Duty has embraced that, you've got war zone 32 versus 32 with tanks jets, helicopters um, gunships coming in and then you've got Warzone, these massive, massive map, where which basically Call of Duty on these big maps has become more Battlefield than Battlefield. Honestly, all you've got to do is you've got to go on YouTube and just look up um, Warzone clips 
and the likes. Lots of Battlefield YouTubes are producing these, and that you go on the Reddit, and the things you see people doing are the crazy things that you used to see in Battlefield 4 and Battlefield 1. You know, people lobbing C4 onto jeeps and blowing people up, crashing helicopters into the sides of buildings to take people out. So much amazing stuff that, that happens that it, it's very friendly to, to, to make you to make really good videos out of. And then when you come and play the game, because you're used to playing Call of Duty, it, it just feels so good and it's so accessible like that because as I say you know the gunplay is just like Call of Duty and of course the the big problem that um, say something like Apex has or Fortnite has or PUBG has is, is that you can't really practice the gunfights uh, you know the gunplay very well very often but of course with this game all you've got to do is buy the full version of COD Modern Warfare 2019 and you know and go and play some team deathmatch, go go and play some free for all, go and play some ground war, go and play against some bots in a in a private local match. And you can really get to know the guns, you can try different loadouts and become one with the equipment. Um, trying lots of different things. The armour, let's talk about the armour. I when this game first came out, I was a little bit reticent about the armour. I was thinking, oh, I'm not sure. Basically, it's, it's the same armor system as Fortnite and I guess Apex and um, the uh, the Battlefield uh, Battle Royale Firestorm in the fact that all it's really doing is increasing your health. But the armor isn't too strong, I don't think. Um, when you're in a situation in this game, even if someone's at full armor, if you start shooting them, you can take them down really quick. Because the problem with Firestorm and the likes of Apex is, if someone's at full armour and you start shooting them, they've got enough time to turn around and return fire. So if you haven't got any armour, you're stuffed at that point, and that's not fair, that's not right. And that's something that PUBG does very well with armour. You know, if you've got the better position, you win, and that's the way it should be. You know, tactics should always, 9 times out of 10, beat gunplay. If you've got the advanced position, as long as you can hit them, they should die, and uh, that seem, seems to work. All you really need to do is, when you're playing into squads, just put extended mags on your machine guns, and then you'll have more than enough bullets to to deal with you know, more than one enemy at a time. Sure, you're not going to be able to knock out three people, you know? Um, but, yeah, that, that's, that's what squads is all about. There's not too many glitches in this game. You know, there are a few. I've got stuck between a rock and a tree once. But, you know, there's not all the stuff like we have in PUBG where you'd be driving a motorbike and suddenly do an endo and kill you. That's always the catch with glitches, isn't it? That PUBG gets very, very wrong. The glitches often kill you and it makes it really frustrating. So that seems cool. Um, you can buy a self-revive. How amazing is that? You have the ability to self-revive, so if someone gets a lucky headshot on you in solos or squads, and as long as you're behind cover, stick yourself with your self-revive and you can get up and you can keep fighting. If you die anyway, you get another chance to come back for free in the Gulag, so you have this really cool one versus one. If you win, okay, you've lost all your stuff, you can dive back in and crack on. Helicopters, quads, trucks, jeeps, Land Rovers, all these vehicles that we can play around with. Kill streaks, you just heard a couple coming in there. We've got the cluster strike and the airstrike, so you know they're not too OP, and you get plenty of warning when someone's called one in on your position. And of course, because you've got the self revive, even if someone does call in a cluster strike on you and it kills you, just wait. Wait for the cluster strike to finish, self revive, and then you're cool, you're good to go then we have the custom loadouts one of the real bits of genius about this game the fact that you can bring in the guns from multiplayer into the battle royale but it's not as simple as that because you've got all this kind of rock paper scissors balancing that you don't really have in the multiplayer that much but in here you see I'm using a thermal scope so in order to count a th counter a thermal scope you have to equip cold-blooded You'll see in this game that I'm using the um, heartbeat sensor. To counter that, you have to have Ghost. But if you want to hold a sniper and an assault rifle, you've got to use Overkill, which means you can't use Ghost. And then if you're using Cold-Blooded, it means you can't use EOD to re reduce explosive damage. 
you know, if you're using a, a submachine gun, you're going to do very good up close, but you're going to sacrifice your ability to hit enemies at range. It's it's a, it's fascinating when you really think about what you're going to take into. What is the best loadout to take in? What are the best perks to take in? Um, and you can also obviously take in all your custom player skins for you, for your player and your weapon skins and this economy of money they they've solved the problem that battle royales have about the mid game so the problem with the mid game often in battle royales is that when you drop you often get into gunfights and it's exciting and then nothing happens for the next 15 minutes and then you have the end game where it's exciting but because you have these contracts where you can track other players down bringing players together to fight you can go and hold positions you can go looking for supply um, boxes these keep you busy because you're trying to earn enough money to call in a supply drop to be able to buy a gas mask to be able to buy a cluster strike buy a UAV all that sort of stuff and you have this balance of risk versus reward you know you don't always just want to stay where you are camping because you might as well keep going no inventory it's, <laughs> there's no inventory screen in this game. You know, they, they, the guns spawn as they are, and then if it's a better gun, it'll have more attachments on. That's it. So there's no going into the pool screen to try and repair your armor, like in Blackout or in PUBG, trying to put the different attachments on. No, no, you just pick it up and you go. Deadly gas. This is super important. The gas hurts. The gas kills you in a few seconds. There's no running out into the gas and surviving in the gas. And if you haven't got a uh, gas mask on your character starts coughing and spluttering and people inside the circle aren't the gas can hear you coming and can shoot you and it's very difficult to see into the gas and to see out of the gas as well there's loot everywhere you can find stuff even if you die late game you'll find yourself you know a weapon a loot box you can keep going or you'll find yourself a random supply drop where you can pick up your custom supply um, your custom setup for multiplayer, so that's really, really cool. Auto pickups of ammo and armor. How good is that? You can tag play people and places, you can tag enemies and loot, you can drop stuff. And here we are, <laughs> to rush that little bit, into the final circle, where you will get the final circle sweats. And as you can see here, here. So, what I'm thinking about now, this is where we go finally onto the tactical thing. I'm just looking to see pe where people are. I've taken fire from the right. And what you're going to see now is use of the self-revive. Because this guy to my left is quite a long way away. There's a guy running in there. So I try and take cover here. But I can't quite see where he is. And he shoots me through the grass and kills me. I could use the self-revive though. And I get my second chance. You know, everybody deserves a second chance, don't they, in a game? And that's what I have. Now he... I suppose he might not think I'm dead. So, again, I can put my armour back in. I've got a UAV that I could use. Unfortunately, I forget to use it. And the other thing that I forget to use is my heartbeat sensor as well. And here all I'm doing is I'm just waiting for the other players to kill each other. Thinking about where they are. I know there's a guy over there. Okay, we don't kill him, but, you know, we... Probably knock a little bit of health out of him. Throw a Molotov over there just to see. Now, at this point, I am inside the circle. So I don't need to push, but I'm a bit nervous the fact that someone could jump over the wall or come round that side or come round the other side. So I'm just listening out. The next circle is the one where the it completely disappears. So that, you know, the gas envelops. And what you'll see is it becomes very difficult for me to for me to be able to see. And what you've got to do, you've got to kind of look at the circle and try and, try and figure out where the centre will be because that's where the people are going to be going into. But you don't want to move too early because people are going to be behind cover, they're going to be waiting, they're going to be using their gas masks. Right, so I can hear someone to my right. There's gunfire going on, you can see it on the compass. Now, I try and put that thing down, but it kind of glitches out I think so I'm not quite sure what happens but I can't use it anymore I then try and call in my UAV but it says I'm not allowed to do that I waste my Molotov really there I could have probably used it better so there's right, so this just waiting now grenades coming in three people left where are they so I can hear someone to my right why I'm not using my heartbeat sensor I will not know here comes the gas. 
I'm still on the edge though. Right, so that guy's gone down. Where's the other guy? Now it's very difficult to see things. Right, so he dies. One guy left. Fires at me from alright. I'm kind of firing blind. And I managed to get him, so I was a bit lucky there really. <laughs> yeah. He I think that guy had cold blooded. Um, he must have done because I couldn't normally the, op the optic would, would pick him up but saying that when you're in the gas like that you can't see stuff and that's what's another really clever thing about this game you don't have an advantage by staying in the gas um, because it's always cheesy isn't it? you know how gutted you always feel in PUBG where you've got a nice strong position you spend 20 minutes getting some really good kit and you're there and someone runs out of the gas and kills you so there we go Call of Duty Modern Warfare's Warzone Battle Royale mode work of genius. I cannot wait to put hundreds more hours into this game. Really is absolutely fantastic. It's free to play. If you're not playing it, come on. Come on, people. Download it. Give it a go. You will not be sorry. I've got a feeling this is going to be my new greatest game of all time. Anyway, that's enough for me. Thank you very much for watching. Tell me what you think down below. Hit like if you enjoyed the video and subscribe if you want to see more. Thank you very much. Goodbye.